El Paso Elsewhere is a love letter to Max Payne, complete with its iconic gameplay from decades ago and a story of star-crossed lovers reminiscent of Romeo and Juliet. The demo was an absolute blast to play, but my biggest concern was if the gameplay would remain fresh for the duration of the game and be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with the story. Unfortunately, the fear has been realized as El Paso Elsewhere just becomes overly repetitive with its gameplay, environments, and enemies. Instead of Romeo, you are James Savage, an addict who finally decides to break good, and in the place of Juliet is Dracula, your ex-girlfriend and Lord of the Vampires, who is about to conduct a ritual that will end the world as you know it. The story is engaging due to its Shakespearean formula, and when combined with superb voice acting and cinematic cutscenes, what you have is the same qualities that make you want to binge a Netflix season. Game is broken down into 50 chapters that should take you around 8 to 10 hours to complete. Having short chapters was a wise choice that does break up the monotony of doing the same thing repeatedly. Shoot some bad guys, mostly mummies and werewolves, rescue some hostages, and get back to the elevator as you descend deeper into the void. If we're using the story as a catalyst for what can be done with the enemies and the environments, then the palette should have been infinite, as there is no limit to what can happen in the void. Instead, the environments were mostly limited to a motel, tombs, and a meatpacking plant. The good news is that the shooting mechanics feel just like you remember them from 2001, but that joy eventually fades as it quickly becomes rinse and repeat. The same mummy that you see in Chapter 1 is still the main threat in Chapter 45. El Paso Elsewhere did have a few boss battles, but they didn't require much skill, and for the most part, the way that the enemies progressed throughout the game was just bigger monster closets. Although there was a variety in the weapons, some felt similar, and changing between such a large selection actually became cumbersome during hectic battles. Adding in a slowdown during weapon changing would have been the easiest solution, but limiting the weapons to just two or three would have been perfect if there was some slight upgrading throughout for damage, range, fire rate, and reload speed, and this also would have dangled the carrot for exploration. It also would have been nice to have some type of audio indication when your health was low as things can get very hectic and taking your eye off the action wasn't easy when the hordes get sent your way. There were also a few areas that saw frame rate dips, but that solution was usually to restart a checkpoint, which is likely a memory issue and this can get resolved through a post-launch patch, hopefully. Just like Romeo and Juliet, El Paso Elsewhere is a tragedy of what could have been. The fun is there in the beginning, but with some refinements on the gameplay, environments, and enemies, the focus would have been put on the superb story, excellent voice acting, and great direction where it should have been.